What is up guys? Welcome and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Day and I am a cybersecurity professional and college student. And on this channel, I'll talk about cybersecurity, college certifications and internships. And today I'm going to be specifically talking about how I landed a cybersecurity engineering internship at Intel earlier in this year. And you know how the experience was landing an internship at such a large company with Intel being uh, a Fortune 50 company and the sixth largest tech company in the world. So I'm just gonna be talking about that experience because it was definitely a fun experience for me and a great learning experience. And I hope you can find some things that could potentially help you in landing internships at uh, such large companies. With that said, let's just dive right into the video. Uh, before I start the video, if you like my content, if you like these kind of videos, please be sure to smash the like button. And if you're not subscribed, please be sure to subscribe. Um, all of that really helps the channel growing and also and keeping the encouragement up to keep making all these kind of videos to help you guys out in your cybersecurity career. So please make sure to show your support by liking, subscribing, and of course, sharing the video with anyone who you think would provide value to. So let's just dive right into the video. All right, so um, I got the opportunity for this internship earlier in this year, um, around March, April, um, and it started pretty much from a friend. So a friend uh, told me about the position. He was like, hey, uh, have you seen this job uh, position? It looks like Intel is hiring for a um, incident response intern, actually. That was the position that Intel was hiring for. And I was like, oh, that looks like a really great position. Um, it would be you know, a great opportunity to work at such a large company. And so I applied, put in my resume, and um, I didn't hear back for quite a while. But later, later, later in that month, I got reached out to by an Intel recruiter, and the recruiter was pretty much asking for my information, um, my experience, my skills, different things that I'm interested in, uh, compensation, um, and, you know, location, um, different things like that. So I pretty much sent, you know, a summary of all of that by myself, and I also didn't hear back after a while. Um, but a couple of weeks later, I got a call from um, an Intel recruiter and they were inquiring about my experience. So I think my, my information must have been in the database. Um, but this person was actually inquiring about a different position uh, for a, a different kind of security engineering uh, position where it actually required that the candidate uh, have you know some level of experience with C++ and I personally wasn't really interested in any form of like application application security engineering internships at that moment and so I was you know I kind of just told him like I do have a little bit of experience with C++ but not at the level at which you might require for the internship and I'm really not at this moment uh, really interested in application security so um, I turned that down so I never got through the interview process for that. Uh, later on, I got in, reached out to by another recruiter from you know Intel as well, and they were like, "Hey, um, we had I have your information, and I think you might be a great fit for our security infrastructure and architecture internship. Um, would you like if I send your resume to the managers for that position?" I was like, "Yeah, sure." I'll go ahead and send my resume. I definitely will be interested in security infrastructure and architecture, which is something that I'm actually truly and deeply interested in. So the recruiter went ahead and sent my resume to the managers that are in charge of that position. And a couple of days later, I was already um, speaking, I was already contacted by the managers and the recruiter um, and scheduled an interview for the infrastructure and uh, arch architecture position. So um, leading up to the interview, I did a little bit of a little bit of preparation. So I have like a blurb of different interview questions that you know I could potentially get asked. Did a little bit of research on um, Glassdoor and also reached out to a person that I knew on LinkedIn that had recently gotten an internship from them. Just kind of asked them how the interview process was and what I should possibly expect. So I didn't really have that much help for an interview, but I had uh, some understanding of what to expect in terms of when I was going into the interview. So um, before the interview, I kind of found out that. Uh, the position was actually not for a security infrastructure and architecture internship. It was for a security engineering internship. So I was like, you know, fine, you know, whichever ways it was. But it was a little confusing how, you know, everything was just like not so orderly from me applying for an um, instant response internship to someone reaching out to me for like an application security um, internship. And then now interviewing for what was supposed to be a security infrastructure and engineering um, and architecture internship. 
and it was actually a security engineering internship. But nonetheless, I wasn't too faced by that. Um, it didn't really matter to me as long as it was definitely a position I was interested in and, um, you know, I felt like I was qualified for and I would, you know, do very well in the position. So I went ahead and interviewed with um, two managers. So one was a senior manager, I think a global manager for um, security engineering, infrastructure and architecture. And then another manager was a manager of um, something, I think cybersecurity operations. And uh, the interview was pretty uh, um, conversational, which I, I liked a lot. Um, and it just pretty much started with me kind of going over my experience, my skills and different things like that. And, um, you know, I went over my experience, my education, my projects and uh, different stuff like that. And they began to ask me uh, different kind of questions about, about you know, inter integrations of like certain tools um, and stuff like that. And I realized that um, I was able to really confidently answer their questions because of um, my home lab. Uh, it's, it's crazy to say it, but the effort that I put into my home lab really helped me um, understand um, how security engineering works in, in at the level at which it was required for that position and for that internship. And you know, I was getting asked questions about uh, in integrations of like some some tools that I've worked with, and um, I was able to answer those questions you know, confidently and you know really really uh, show my my depth of knowledge for those tools you know and how to use those tools especially for security engineering and also a little bit into tying into infrastructure and architecture so that went pretty well um and after that it was just like conversation conversational um t talking to me about what i could potentially expect in the internship um different projects i'll be working on and you know the team I'm working with, and you know the time the internship will be from, um, possibility of um, extending a full-time offer after that, and yeah, that was just really the summary of the interview. Um, I and I think the way the interview went was it, it's kind of seemed like I was able to steer the interview in a direction that was favorable to me because I talked about projects that I've done and tools that I have experience with um, in my home lab and also. Um, and like real life working situations, and those were kind of that was those were the things that kind of led to um, different conversational points in the interview that I was able to confidently talk about. So the fact that I was able to talk about things that I know very well, you know, really really helped me, um, you know, show my level of knowledge because I know how to do these things. I've done them over and over again. So that really really helped me out. And you know, after that, I asked you know some questions. Um, I usually have certain questions I ask um, interviewers. I might do a, a video about. Um, things that you know you should ask your interviewer um, after a cybersecurity um, uh, interview, um, whether it's for internships or for like entry-level positions or you know mid-level positions as well. Um, those um, questions really, really kind of show what kind of candidate you are, as well as you know what kind of person you would be when you eventually get the position. So, asking questions is also really, is really, really important. Um, as much as they're interviewing you, you're also interviewing them because you're trying to find out if you know, you're a good fit for the position as much as they're trying to find out that you're also a good fit for a position. So it's kind of, you know, a back and forth conversation. So like I said, the interview went pretty well. It was about 30 or 45 minutes and that's, you know, pretty much the gist of it. And, you know, a couple of days later, I got an email for a background check, which is really weird. Um, companies usually extend the offer before the background check in my experience uh, that I know of, but it seemed like they were doing a background check before extending the offer. So I was, you know, a little bit weirded out, but you know, nonetheless, I did the background check, my background check passed. And after that, they sent me an offer and it was a really, a pretty generous offer. Um, it was a lot more than I, I was, I, I was earning at the time. And um, it, it had a sign on bonus, which is really good um, for an internship. Um, it also had some, like some stock options as well that were also pretty decent for an internship. But the only thing about the internship that, you know, really, uh, threw, that really didn't sit well with me was the amount of time allocated for it. So I was only going to be working a couple of hours uh, per week, not up to 40 hours. I, mean, I didn't really mind um, as much, I mean, because I'm still in school and everything. Um, and that was really the only thing that was, you know, a little iffy for me. I mean, if I was working that internship, I would probably have time for other things as well. But the other thing as well was that um, it was a, a, a return offer wasn't guaranteed. So if I completed this internship and I didn't get a return offer, then I would be out of a job and be looking for another internship or another full time position after it. And I was like, um, at that time, I was also interviewing for two other positions and I got an offer for 
uh, another full-time position um, that was offering a lot more money, uh, bigger, uh, a larger bonus, um, and a lot more incentives. Um, and it was full-time, it was more secure. So I ended up going for you know that other full-time position. But I just think, um, I just wanna talk about this experience because it was one of my major experiences. Um, this was not my first time um, interviewing with a Fortune 500, and this is not my first time getting an offer from Fortune 500. But this is like the, I guess the largest um, company that I've actually gotten an offer from for, you know, security engineering internship. And I will be talking about my other experience with another Fortune 500 that I interviewed with earlier last year and, you know, how that went. That's actually a really interesting story. Uh, but I hope you were able to like gain some things uh, uh, from, you know, this experience I, I just, you know, shared with you. Um, I think the real thing that I want to point out here is, is projects. I think for internships, projects are really, really important. Um, home lab projects, you know, uh, are really important. I, I think for me, I always recommend for students to have a home lab project, which is why I have a home lab project, you know, on this channel and on my blog to show you how to build one out so you can have it because I just think it's really important and it sets you apart. Um, and also the skills you gain from that project is are, are, are really valuable um, because Number one, not everyone is doing it, right? But that might just be what sets you apart. And you know, it's you gain a lot from it. It's a lot, a lot you learn from it, from the building process, and from you know, you messing around with different things in your home lab. So, highly, highly recommend you know building a home lab. If you're not seeing my home lab video, I'll leave a link to it um, in the description. I actually have two um, playlists. I actually recommend this hybrid detection lab because it's more up to date, it's complete, um, and you know, it's, it's a lot better than the previous one. But if you want to get started with the other one. You know, that's left to you. Um, definitely go ahead and, and try it out. But yeah, that's you know what I really want to point, point out. Uh, projects are really really important, especially for cybersecurity internships and not just home lab. You know, if you are you know if you know how to program, which is something I'm currently learning how to do right now. You know, in Python, just like you know, build write, write scripts. Um, you know, create a little uh, some kind of tool in, in Python, um, and you know, just get better at it. Have projects to show your knowledge because. You might not have experience, you might not have previous internships like I did, you might not have a, a previous full-time job like I did before I applied for this internship, but your projects really make you stand out, especially if you know they're really intentional and well thought out and directed towards cybersecurity. Um, and of course, list your projects on your resume. So it shows um, that you have taken your time out to think something out, right? To think about uh, a problem and you created a solution for that problem, right? So. Um, a home lab might not do that, but for example, if you created a tool in Python, right, that is, is cybersecurity related, um, you know, it, it shows that you actually sat down to think about, you know, how to, you know, use this tool to make something that's really important, right? However you think about it, it's, it's really important to have projects to bolster your experience, your skills, your resumes, and have a place where you document all these projects, right? Um, like for me, my YouTube channel and my blogs are the ways I, I document my projects and things that I do so that if I ever get asked about it, you know, I have, you know, my YouTube channel to show for it um, and my blog to show for it as well. And as I'm going to be doing some uh, programming project related projects soon, I will have my GitHub on my, on my, on my link, on my, on my resume to show, you know, different projects I've been working on. So uh, projects, 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 um, skills, and, you know, really being able to articulate your thoughts properly in an interview um, are really important. And yeah, I think you know, that's pretty much the gist of how I got an offer for a security engineering internship at Intel. Um, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a you know pretty complex um, um, interview process, um, and it wasn't like you know too many interviews. It was just like one interview uh, with you know the, the team, and it went pretty well. So um, if you're you know looking to apply to Intel for an internship next year, I hope this helps you. Or if you're looking to get into Fortune 500 companies or larger companies for cybersecurity related internships, um, I hope this helps you as well. Of course, um, hiring practices will be different from company to company, but I think the basics still remain the same. The major things are your skills, your projects, and also your network. You never know, like somebody in your network could give you a referral you know for positions and I was talking about that pretty soon because um, that's something that I think people need to really realize that your network could do so much uh, wonders for you um, in terms of like landing positions um, landing internships landing um, entry-level positions mid-level positions any any kind of positions um, I think I, I, I have a lot to say about that um, in the next couple of weeks or months but yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found value in this video. Once again, if you like this content, please be sure to, to like the video and subscribe if you're new, subscribe. And of course, share this video with anyone who you think it will provide value to. Once again, thank you very much for watching the video. I will see you in the next video.